Ladies and gentlemen, the steam train that is 8.3 PTR just keeps on rolling. Uh, so I'll do my best to keep on top of it. As uh, We've done a lot of 8.3 videos, more than we would usually do for an upcoming patch. But honestly, this patch, as I said, is bigger than the expansion launch. It's that huge in how much stuff it's bringing into the game and trying to educate players on. Yet another layer which is going to cause problems. And at the end of the video, I'm going to have a bit more of a personal chat about some of the messages that are getting mixed up and player feedback and also some revelations i've had recently so stick around for that one if you want to hear that uh let's get started with the alt friendliness to start on a positive some alt friendliness coming in 8.3 in terms of the legendary cloak upgrades legendary cloaks that you would get at the start via a quest are upgraded up to various ranks and after that they have a concordance style system that we had in legion where they would continuously grow in strength just providing corruption resistance which allows you to wear more of the corruption gear that we're going to be seeing in 8.3, of course, with the removal of Warforge and Titanforging. Now, the good thing about this is it's really, really alt-friendly. You can get it done in about 17 minutes per alt once a week. That's it. Uh, all you need to do is get the 1,000 Coalesced Essences, which you'll get from your primary quest uh, that you'll get at the beginning of the week to go down to the new assaults. And then go into a Horrific Vision, which is provided by the 1,000 Coalescing Essences. And go straight to the immediate boss in front of you. So if that is the Ogrimmar Vision, it's straight to Thrall. If it's the Stormwind Vision, straight to Verisa. Kill her, kill him, and get your upgrade. And that's it. You're done. Your Legendary Cloak is upgraded. Uh, so if you have alts that you're going to look at after progression, or when you're done with your main character, you can jump on them once a week, get that done, leave that character alone... And then when you come back to it, you're going to have a really highly upgraded Legendary Cloak waiting for you without much effort at all. So that's really nice to see. Good to see that you can get that done. If you've already got a thousand Coalesced Essences because you did, say, a bit more the week before, it'll take you less than two minutes. Just jump into a vision, go and get it, come back. And if you want to upgrade your cloak and you hate visions, that's fine too. You can get it from Nazoth as well. There's multiple sources of gaining your Legendary Cloak upgrade. Now I will point out here, although it's extremely unlikely that you can upgrade the cloak multiple times. As I said, there are multiple sources of the item that upgrade it. The quest still remains after you do a turn in. So you can get it from like killing Nazoth. You can get it from the Horrific Visions as mentioned. Highly unlikely you can do that more than once a week. But I'm just saying right now the quest remains. Maybe, but I highly, highly doubt it. I'm just putting it out there for safety concerns more than covering my own ass. Let's put it that way. Uh, let's talk about Rep Farm. So Rep Farm is something a few of you have brung, brung up to me considering how much Mechagon and Najatao felt kind of required and in many cases were required uh, when 8.2 launched. The Rep Farm for both the Miss of Pandaria faction and the Oldham faction are basically the same as Mechagon. And this should be a good idea in many of you if you've ever done that Rep Grind is that one thing gives you a multiple more, right? Multiplicative more than doing all the daily quests combined. Which means if you want a big fat chunk of rep without spending more than, say, 10 minutes down there, you could do that. And then you can leave it alone and gain that rep over time if it's not something you're particularly interested in. Uh, the main source of rep will come from the cash or the emissary style box or filling the bar and doing that kind of thing. And that'll give you anywhere between 500 to 1500 reputation. The daily quests are going to give you 75 and you usually get about four or five of those. So just jumping down and doing the 10 minute thing will net you the vast majority of the reputation. Or you can go for about 75% more by doing all the daily quests and adding maybe 30 minutes or 20 minutes to your timer being in that zone. So I will say if you're going to turbo nerd it, and you really want to get the rewards, and we'll talk about them in a minute, then if you do absolutely everything every single day, uh, then you will get to Exalted about 75% faster. If it's not something you particularly asked about, though, you can do it over time, very similar to Mechagon. Now you can go and do the one standard daily that appears when you enter the zone, get a huge chunk, and then leave very, very quickly and not have to worry about it. So let's talk about the rewards then. So in terms of functional rewards that you might want if you're a raider or a PvPer or whatever it might be, the rewards are only essences. That's it. So there's different essences for each faction, which means for some of you, you're not going to want them at all. And therefore, the rep grind is kind of useless. There are cosmetic rewards, mounts, tabards, pets, the usual stuff. But if it's something functional for your character, you might not need to do any of the rep grind whatsoever. So that's a thumbs up. They are going to have the new essences. They're not the only source of them. There's a new essence that comes from the raid. There's a new essence that comes from other things and visions. Uh, but they have some essences that are the corruption resistance essences. And I should point out here, they have changed this system 
Again, so many things changing in 8.3. Uh, they've changed the system now, so you can put in Corruption Resistance Essences, the new ones that are coming in, into any minor slot. But they do not stack. You can't put, say, three Corruption Resistance Essences in and get that Corruption Resistance from each one. So each one usually provides 10, so you can't get 30 by putting one in each of your three minor slots. That's not going to work. You'll just get 10. So whichever one you put it in, entirely up to you. And a reminder here that your final minor Essence slot unlocks at 70 five which is going to be relatively easy to get ap as a reminder is practically dead uh if you're relatively up to date once 8.3 goes live there's only five levels to get uh which you can stack emissary boxes double of them right now to skip a lot of that when it actually goes live something i recommend you do if you're interested in finishing your ap grind as quickly as possible and you're still playing retail is just to overcap your emissaries over time remember we're not expecting this patch until late january early february plenty of time just to build up those reputations so you can skip most of the ap grind that remains so it should be only small once 8.3 goes live the other reward that does come from rep farm is from the mist of pandaria faction which is the augment rune the permanent one a feature of every expansion now since the wards of draenor i think uh now it does require exalted and 50k so as many people found out in legion especially it takes a really, really long time to, to, for this thing to actually turn a profit and to be useful compared to just getting ordinary augment runes. So the advantage, of course, is bag space. Unless you're carrying like 60 a time, you might save two slots and then having the permanent one. But really think about this. Do you want it? I would also point out if you have stacks of augment runes, get them on the auction house. Get them up there right now. Uh, so let people can buy them because people ultimately will accidentally or not even try to get exalted. And similar to me, even though I have bought the augment rune every single time it's been available, I'm pretty sure I've never turned a profit on the damn thing. <laughs> so we rarely, I use them for the sake of using them, even on farm. Where if I didn't have it, I just wouldn't use it. Uh, it's as simple as that. So it's a case of I pick it up for convenience and just to have the extra power. Uh, but I don't really care about it too much. So ultimately, other people will be in that same position and just have it. So if you do have these things, get them on the auction house. Get rid of them. Uh, but those, that is the rewards functionally that you'll get from the, the rep rewards is the augment rune and essences. So check with your classes. Your mileage is going to vary on whether or not you even need to bother with these reputations. It's entirely up to you. If you want to go down and get some coalesced essences, you can do that and leave. On that note, they have re-added coalesced essences, which were removed in the last update, to the mini invasions. So I talked about the Ogmar and Stormwind horrific visions. These are the things that are the big ones that cost a thousand coalesced essences to enter. They have re-added the essences, uh, the coalesced essences. <laughs> I wish there wasn't so many essence words. Uh, into the minor ones. But again, it is the same as rares and things like that. It's in twos and threes. That's all it is. They do come with quests. So what it looks like right now is if you really turbo, if you go full maximum turbo farm when this content comes live, and you do everything every single day, your likelihood is you're going to get one, one and a half, maybe 1.2 extra horrific visions, which might, especially in early progress, net you like a couple of hundred, 400 extra corrupted mementos, which ultimately gives you like one extra talent point in the tech tree. Over time, of course, you will cap that tech tree quicker. You will start working towards the gem slots quicker. But I will bear in mind and say again here, uh, the corrupted mementos, the amount you need to get a gem slot is 25,000. It's a huge amount. So those extra few hundred, uh, which will add up over time, especially as you spend longer in heroic visions and maybe start using faceless masks and things like that, uh, will add up over time for sure. But if you haven't got the time and you haven't got any of these resources to spend all day doing these invasions or you flat out just don't want to, it's not going to be a problem. You're not going to be too far behind. I wouldn't worry about it. Nobody's going to stack up gem slots or anything in the first couple of weeks. Ain't happening unless a bug is found. Uh, let's talk about professions. So we now know how professions are going to work. This is one of the systems that is suffering from sort of BFA. 8.3 is practically wiping out everything that happened pre-BFA. Uh, Pre-8.3 for the most part, like AP. Azerite remains, but Blizzard is... Quoted as saying, the Azerite that certainly will drop in the raid will have your BIS stats on it. That's why there's not much Azerite armor in there. Some classes are obviously reporting, those aren't my BIS stats. But hoping and fingers crossed uh, that Blizzard does manage to pull that off. Uh, professions then, you no longer go down to the trainer to get your profession recipes. They now drop from the new invasions and the assaults. 
but they dropped very quickly. I needed five recipes, four for leather working, because you get the mail and the leather, and one for jewel crafting. And I got them within the first half an hour of doing the assaults. They drop extremely quickly and have a very high drop rate. So you shouldn't have any trouble getting those. They still are going with the same system as Najatara with the Abyssal Focus. It's called like the Void, void Focus now. Same thing that you'll need to upgrade that in order to get the higher tier of gear. The system remains the same. The thing it is suffering from though is requiring pre 8.3 materials. Namely, Expulsum. And if you're doing dual crafting, green gems and red gems. I have tweeted out to Blizzard to please, please, at least for the dual crafters, somebody think of the children. Like, <laughs> getting those green and red gems is absurd. And dual crafting requiring four to five times more expense, if not more in some cases, than every other profession is super frustrating. I will point out here and remind you that Mechagon Mythic Plus is coming in 8.3. And the rings that come from Mechagon are probably going to outstrip the dual crafting rings. There's a high chance of that happening rather than take, taking dual crafting. So if you wanted an alternative to dual crafting, now is probably the time. <laughs> now is probably the time if you're sick of having to spend millions of gold to get your BIS dual crafting ring, which is a situation I have been in since the launch of BFA. So that is how the profession system is going to work. Okay, let's talk about gear. So MMO Champion pointed out that the catch-up gear is in the game. It's been altered a couple of times and since that post from MMO Champion. Now, it should be clear, this is the gear that naturally drops while you're doing assault and invasions right these are nothing to do with targeted gear which is coming yet is not on the ptr yet that'll be the higher level stuff that involves horrific visions and things like that we'll look at that when it comes this is the gear that just naturally drops similar to benthic gear if you're doing Najata, that's it just drops and you can get an item uh mmo champion reported it's item level 400 i did the ptr just before recording this video and it's 410 for me uh, last week it was 415, so it looks like Blizzard is kind of tweaking exactly what item level they want this stuff to be. So currently on the PTR it's 410. This is the blue stuff, right? This is not the good stuff. So don't worry because you, if you're thinking to yourself, my Benthic gear is higher than that. Like, what the hell? Yeah, you're right. Uh, from the caches though, from the emissary style boxes for the new stuff, the gear is already 445. All right, it's already 445 that's naturally dropping from there. And of course, all this gear can corrupt as well. Uh, again, reminder, this is not the Visions gear. So it's not in the game right now, but it was. Like, temporarily it was in the game. And the higher level stuff came from doing horrific visions with faceless masks, uh, which are the extra affixes you can add on yourself to horrific visions to make them more difficult for greater rewards. That's not back in the game yet. I think they're still messing around with how difficult the horrific visions are supposed to be. Uh, so when that's back in the game, we'll take a look at it then. Now, currently, it does not look like there's going to be anything similar to Benthic. Thank God. Thank God for that. Nothing similar to Benthic. No weird rolls. No weird upgradable items that outstrip everything else in the game. Uh, nothing along those lines. It's just going to be high-level gear that's appropriate for your class. That's how it's going to be. Stats are set and things like that, so it should be fine. So on the note of corruption levels then, what is the idyllic corruption level? So this is what a lot of people have been asking me, and we did about two hours of testing uh, out in the open world, trying different levels to see exactly what feels safe. And that's the problem with it. So it should be pointed out here that Blizzard has removed the debuffs you get from corruption. Uh, so if you're not clear on the system yet, Warforge, Titanforge, random gem slots, all that is gone. Uh, what we have now is corruption. Some items will gain corruption, which gives you some sort of bonus, like more haste from all sources, increased damage with critical strikes, things like that. Uh, however, it will come with corruption on it and have a varying amount, like 10 to 20, depending on how powerful the corruption bonus is. Uh, previously, the way this worked was in bandings. So if you had one corruption, you would gain grasping tendrils, which means that when you took damage, you had a chance to be slowed down. At 20, you got corrupted zones. And then at 40, you had grand delusions, which would cause an, an, an enemy to spawn called a thing from beyond, which would chase you and hit you uh, and do damage to you. And then after that, it all went crazy. You had a stacking damage debuff on you and also less healing taken. So you could get absolutely killed and murderized <laughs> if you were to take that much. So the big question has been, how much is good? So the debuffs that it used to show, which it used to show in-game and on your character, which debuffs you had from how much corruption you had, has now all moved to a new user interface element. I'm a little concerned here that some players might not notice this and just not understand why corrupted zones are spawning on them, why a thing from beyond is spawning on them, and why they're getting killed 
doing daily quests where previously they were smashing through them. However, it's quite a nice little icon. It's a little Cthulhu eye, so I imagine most people will notice it. They put it right next to item level, which I'm sure many people who would be in this sort of uneducated state would probably look at at some point and see, ooh, what's this eye? And mouse over it. And there it does clearly tell you what debuffs you have and how much corruption you have and how much corruption resistance you have. Uh, so this is a very good system. So I'm fine with it. I think it's going to work out well. Uh, from what we can tell, if you're even up to a Mythic Raider, anywhere between 20 to 30 seems fine. All right, 20 or 30 seems fine. Around 30, the they have reduced sort of the corrupted zone that spawns underneath you. They've made that smaller. You'll see several of them in the background, these little pools that spawn. They're relatively small. So far, no fight that should cause a problem with unless it's really overlapping something dangerous. Uh, but you're supposed to be moving out of it anyway. There are very few fights. I went through all the raid bosses. There was not really any I could see where this would be a big issue. Uh, even on fights where you do need to stack temporarily, it seems fine. Uh, and also, it doesn't do enough damage to you to cause a problem. So you're talking like 14k ticks and it hits you twice if you were forced to stand in it. So in an absolute worst case scenario that a corrupted zone spawned underneath you, you would have to stand in it. It'd do 28k damage. So... That's really nothing when you are going to be running pools of HP around about 500k, which is likely what we're to see around this time. Somewhere between four to 500k is likely to be our HP value. So it's nothing to really worry about at that level. Past that, it starts getting dangerous because then you're going to edge up to 40. This is when the thing from beyond starts spawning and this thing hits pretty hard. So it might be fine for you. You could go pretty high with this if you're just doing open world content. But once you start throwing in raid damage and things like that, then it could become a big issue and your healers are going to start getting pissy at you and all those kinds of things. So I leave it to you what's I, what's ideal, but certainly from a mythic level, 20 to 30 seems fine. The slowing effect isn't enough to cause a problem. And the damage, if you are forced to stand in a corrupted zone, ain't that big a deal either. So you should absolutely be fine on those situations. So that's the current state of affairs there. Uh, on a personal note then, my, the main feedback I've had when discussing 8.3 is that... There doesn't seem to be much wrong with this patch. And you're right, there doesn't. There's a lot of alt-friendliness. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can probably just ignore. Uh, and if you don't like it, you don't need to worry about it. And all that kind of stuff. Which seems fine. It seems fine. Like, there's not much for me to say this is a problem. And you know me. If I found a problem, I'd be bitching about it to no end. Uh, but I'm not finding it. One thing that I have had to change my mind on, though... And I'm still not utterly set on my position here, so please don't take this as this is what Preach said. I'm, I'm going through my mindset here. Is the big feedback I had about 8.3 was about essences in general. And it's important to remember, essences are not a feature of 8.3. They're an 8.2 feature, which came out in mid-July. Um, now, the big issue that people have is obviously alts and essences. Now, I want to be clear here. I am fully 100% absolutely on board with people's issue with the essence system when it comes to alts. I recently had to prepare a new alt, my Shadow Priest. I had to regrind Exalted on several characters. I had to get on this character. I had to get Blood of the Enemy again. All this really tedious stuff that I had to do with an alt just for essences. It was awful. Absolutely awful. And I hated it. I also had to do other stuff, which is why I said the profession system suffers from sort of BFA syndrome. I had tailoring on that character, which meant I literally had to spend 100,000 gold buying cloth just to make braces, just to throw them in the scrapper to get Expulsum. An absolutely ludicrous, ludicrous legacy item of BFA that shouldn't be involved in crafting in 8.3. Yet, here it is. Super frustrating to have to deal with that. So I'm fully on your side. However, I'm not completely convinced that the essence system is a problem for mains. Or I wasn't, is what I should say there. Sure, essences for alts are a pain in the ass. However, it has been mid since mid-July, and for most people... You should probably have accidentally gained a reasonable set of essences unless you're actively going out of your way to avoid doing them. I mean, you would actively have to be going out of your way to do, say, Najatar to gain something uh, without doing any reputation stuff, which means you're gaining, you'd, you'd be farming stuff without doing, like, world quests and things like that. Uh, considering it's been out for so long. Uh, that was my mindset on it. It's like, on your main character, the essences are not an 8.3 feature. They're an 8.2 feature, which has been out for a long time now. And even if you did sort of one daily a week or something ridiculous like that, you would have the heroic versions of these essences that at least the ones you wanted for your character are relevant to you. And even if you didn't have the best ones, you must be doing something in-game that's tied to an essence, or at least multiple essences. Otherwise, you'd literally not be playing the game. 
However, what I did find out, though, after doing some research is that's exactly the situation some people are in. I was super surprised to find some people on their main character who had actively gone out of their way to avoid the essence system, almost to the point of it being detrimental, and were complaining that people who had got essences, or nerds as they called them, uh, were at killing them and ganking them super easily because they had, like, a good crucible of flame because they had farmed AP. Which then brings us back to... Uh, my memory kind of unblocked at this point as to what was happening earlier in BFA. Uh, where people, certainly with the way the AP system worked in Azerite, is that you needed a far lower neck level to activate all your traits if you had far lower gear, so you weren't gaining things like mythic level Azerite, and just completely flat out stopped farming AP. Now I could sit here and say AP is not really a thing in 8.3, because it's not if your character is up to date. However, if you've not done anything on your character, or you've simply unsubscribed and are looking to come back, uh, which has been the phrase that I've heard a lot, is returning players uh, to 8.3, then AP is still going to be a thing. Not a great thing. It'll be more like Legion unlocking the artifact weapon, but it is still going to be a thing. And of course, if you have logged out for quite some time, the essence system is going to be a thing. And they're not seemingly doing anything about it, which I find entirely bizarre given how alt-friendly they're pushing Shadowlands, and how alt-friendly 8.3 is, yet this essence system still lingers. Now, they have gone some steps to make it easier, making it easier to acquire essences from Najatara and Mechagon, and of course, they've recently nerfed Blood of the Enemy down to 30,000 honor. Yet, if you're returning and looking to get into the new 8.3 content, and you unsubscribe because you weren't happy with Najatara and Mechagon, you're going to walk back into not only all the 8.3 stuff that I've been talking about, but also the 8.2 stuff, which would be the essence system. Out of no selfishness, because my essences are done on my main, and they're already done on my ult. So this doesn't benefit me. Uh, but I think Blizzard probably needs to really evaluate that 8.3 is looking really, really good. And the essence system is a huge issue for so many players. It's been basically the entire negative feedback I've heard has been the essence system, which isn't even a thing for 8.3. It's an old system at this point. Uh, and saying this is my problem with 8.3 is the 8.2 features and from that perspective i think blizzard probably should do something about it if especially because there are grinds for the new essences that's coming with it so for some players it's going to be definitely a problem and it shouldn't be a problem for main characters it shouldn't be but it clearly is like my research shows there are definitely a lot of players in this position who were like who basically took one look at the essence system and just said no not doing it and that's fair. That's fair. Because I expect a certain level of grind in my MMO. I'm fine with it. And in fact, for me, getting the Essence System at the beginning of 8.2, so I've not even really touched this since re until recently where I did it on alts, and I have to basically take what my feelings were with it with alts, which was that it was trash, and apply it to characters who don't do what I do at the launch of a new patch, which is get everything immediately, and therefore I don't have to worry about it for the next six months. And that's what the position is for my main. I don't have to worry about it for six months. But having just done it on my alts and looking at that as the perspective of if this was my main and I wanted to come back for 8.3 and I wanted to try the new raid and things like purification protocol are going to be really good. I do need blood of the enemy on certain classes like I did on my priest. I might want to get crucible of flame, condensed life force, and blah, 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 blah. All these things. And even though they have made them easier to get, I would be immensely put off by that because it's not fun. <laughs> i think that's the ultimate end of it is it's not fun i'd love to see your thoughts on this and see where you're at because uh, previously to this and this is why it's been playing on my mind when people were asking me about essences my initial response was yeah but this you're talking about alts obviously with a new concept patch we're talking about mains and this is patch 8.2 has been out for like since mid-july so that you're talking about an 8.2 feature and the reality is they didn't do it. And a lot of people seem to be in the same boat. It's like, I just didn't bother with it. Like, I'm not doing BGs. Like, I can't fucking stand doing BGs. And I'm not doing Najatar Exalted because it's not fun. I'm not doing Mechagon Exalted because I don't enjoy it. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And players are rightfully in the situation where if they're not going to enjoy something, they don't want to do it. <laughs> and that leaves them with a big old empty essence slot and a long way away from hitting the 75. Whereas nerds like me are probably going to hit it very, 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 very quickly. They're going to be like, well, I'm still only... I can't remember what the quest boosts you to. Like 40 or something like that. It's like, eh. Or 55, it might be. No, I'm not going to do it. And that's going to turn me off. Because this is legacy BFA stuff. This is patch 8.0 and 8.2 things. 
that are stopping me enjoying 8.3. And although they've been alleviated, just not quite enough. So let me know what you think on that. Thank you very much for listening, guys. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.